were thinking that night. Ladies and gentlemen, Philip. My name is Philip, and I come from Bethany and Galilee. Uh, me and my friends, we were listening to John the Baptist. Uh, Jesus came across us and told us to be our, uh, his disciples. We agreed and followed him. There was a day that I remembered that Jesus himself fed 5,000 people with two loaves of bread and fish. Uh, I asked the master, where, where are we supposed to buy all this food, and we, the day that a young boy came across Jesus, and Jesus gave him lunch, and that the Greeks came to me and asked, can we meet your master, and I took him to Andrew, and Andrew brought them to Jesus. Um, the day that Jesus told us that there is a betrayer among us, I couldn't believe in my own eyes. Why would someone betray Jesus? Why would someone accept to be his disciple and then yet betray him? To me, an, an evil spirit came across that person's heart, but who could it be? Why were we so blind and we didn't know that ourselves? And me and the disciples begin to think, could it be one of them? Could it be me? Can it be Philip? Is it I? Ladies and gentlemen, Thaddeus. I'm Thaddeus. <clears throat> I'm one of the disciples Jesus chose to be an apostle. He chose 12 of us to be the cornerstone of his new kingdom, just as the 12 tribes were the cornerstone of the old kingdom. I feel so unworthy to be chosen, but he chose me. Who could have known? <laughs> After a night of prayer, he called us to him, and he gave us authority over sin sickness, disease, and every unclean spirit. And then he gave us a commission to go forth into all the world and to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said we should be wise as serpents and innocent as doves because he was sending us forth as sheep amongst wolves. I was in Jerusalem when he gave the invitation. He said, come to me, all ye who are late, laden and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. He said that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And now, the one who came to share men's burdens has a burden put on himself. The knowledge that one of us is going to betray him. Which one will it be? Will it be John? Judas? Philip? How can this be? Is it I? Is it I? Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas. Hi, my name is Thomas. They also call me Didymus, the twin. A lot of people think I'm a doubter, but I'm less of a doubter and I'm more of a daring person. Um, I was the one that said, when Jesus was speaking about going to see Martha and Mary, about their brother Lazarus being sick. 
I said, let us go to him that we may die with him. And I tell you, sometimes I just couldn't see things unless it was put in front of me. I had to see it first before I could believe it. Jesus always taught us that believing is seeing. But I had a problem, like most people. I had to see it before I could believe it. This man here, we know he's the son of God. But for some reason, I have trouble believing those things. But again, he performed miracles. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind. The deaf became hearing. And I just couldn't understand why his enemies would want to attack him because of this. I had to think in my heart, what is their problem? He's trying to change this world where it's better instead of worse. What is their problem? Their problem is like Judas was saying. Love of money, greed, power. They were afraid he was going to take away their power. This is not true, regardless of whether you doubt or not. This is not true. Jesus is not going to take your power. If anything, he will give you more power. Amen. And then he said one thing that hurt me deeply. He said, this night one of you is going to betray me. And I looked inside myself and I questioned and I said it out loud. Is it me, Lord? Is it I? How could I do this? Ladies and gentlemen, John. After Jesus called Andrew and Peter, he called me and my brother, James. We were mending our nets and <clears throat> we, when he called us over, we left the nets, we left the boat, and we left our father there. You see, I've tried to understand Jesus by loving him. He was, he was somebody that I was trying to understand. He, I truly believe that he was 100% God as he was also human. But I was there through his trials and I was there in his times of victory. <clears throat> See, I was part of his inner circle so he told me about the conversation he had with Nicodemus and how he's, he said these words that, that were so powerful and meaningful. He said that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. I want to write down those things one day, the words that he said and the actions and the miracles he performed so that everybody could read and, be, and have life in his name. You see, I was also there in the mountain of transfiguration where I got to see his glory. So now <clears throat> he's saying that one of us is going to betray him. Could it be? It can't be Andrew or Peter. Could it be me? Could it be the beloved disciple? Would I betray Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen, Simon the Zealot. I am Simon the Zealot. Before Jesus called me, I belonged to a group of hot-headed, bloodthirsty, 
revolutionaries mm. known as the Zylots. We were all for arms rebelling against Rome. We believe in crushing our enemies under their heels and establishing the ancient glory that was Israel. The days of David and Solomon. Yet Jesus said us <coughs> of a, another kind of kingdom. The kingdom of the human heart. When God reigns there, since I heard this, I changed my mind and also my intelligence. He has shown me that the conquest of the heart is the only true, sincere, and lasting conquest. So I have given him my highest loyalty and deepest devotion I have in military parlance unconditionally and completely surrender myself to him. To think his thoughts, to love as he loved, and whom he loves, to obey as he obeys, to serve as he serves. This surrender has not imprisoned me. Rather, it has set me free for the first time in my life. I am not afraid of Rome any longer. Rome is mighty, but God is almighty. That's right. Now, the master says that there is a spiritual Roman among us, one who would attempt by force what can only be conquered by love. Who can it be? Matthew, the publican, the big fisherman, or his brother? Or does he suspect me, since I'm the only former Zylot among us? Is it I? It is I? And then Peter, the last of our 12. 